The Toyota Formula 1 team goes down as one of the biggest flops in Formula 1 history, if not motorsport history. At the time of their arrival, to have one of the largest car manufacturers in the world involved in Formula 1 was an exciting prospect. They had everything that they needed, including a year's worth of preparation, good if not the best drivers, and also some of the biggest budgets in Formula 1 history. They were originally supposed to enter the sport in 2001, but delayed their entry by a year so that they can go and do a year's testing on tracks that they were going to go and race on in the future with their test drivers Mika Salo and Alan McNish. After that year's worth of testing, they finally entered the sport in 2002 with drivers Alan McNish and Mika Salo with a car that was designed by the former Minardi designer Gustav Brunner. But all that preparation counted for nothing, as in 2002, they walked away with just a measly two points with only two points scoring finishes all season, with one point during their opening race in the Australian Grand Prix, which was only helped by half the field being knocked out at the first corner. And a funny thing about the Australian Grand Prix was that they were beaten by the little independent outfit Minardi, who Gustav Brunner had left to join Toyota. Fifth for them at the Australian Grand Prix with Australian driver Mark Webber was like a win. And their second point of the season came at the third race of the season, again scored by Mika Salo. And that's pretty much as good as it got for the season, with their most memorable moment being the huge crash that they had at Suzuka with Alan McNish at 130R, where he backed into the barrier at colossal speed and he was lucky to walk out alive. 2003 saw a different pair of drivers, this time in Champ Car champion Cristiano De Matta, who won the title the previous year in a Toyota-powered Newman Haas, and former British-American racing driver Olivier Panis. The season ended with them scoring 16 points, which although was an improvement on the season beforehand by quite a significant chunk, it still only was good enough for 8th in the Constructors' Championship, ahead of backmarkers Jordan and Minardi, who were both suffering severe financial difficulties. Their only high point of the season was when they were 1-2 behind the safety car at the British Grand Prix, thanks to them pitting under the safety car at the right time. 2004 saw them start the season with the same driver lineup for the first time, but this didn't last and it was a poor season yet again, but Cristiano De Matta was then sacked by the team and replaced by Ricardo Zonta. He had only lasted in the seat himself for four races before he was then fired for Jano Trulli, who had been sacked by Renault earlier in the season. The team that year equaled their best result a fifth at the US Grand Prix and only just managed to maintain their eighth position in the Constructors' Championship, even though they scored half the points of what they scored the season before. But the low point for that season, especially for a Japanese-owned manufacturer, was they were dragged into an industrial espionage saga with Ferrari. But one high point of that season was they brought in the highly rated Mike Gascoigne to lead their technical team, ready for the following season. 2005 saw them have their most high-profile driver lineup, although maybe not the best on paper, in Jano Trulli and newcomer Ralph Schumacher joining from Williams, who said he joined the team because he believed he had a better chance of winning the title at Toyota than he did at Williams. The Mike Gascoigne designed car went on to score two second place finishes in Malaysia and Bahrain and a third place for Jarno Trulli in Spain. And Ralph Schumacher went on to score a third place finish in both Hungary and China. And so the 2005 season was their best season in the sport so far by far and they even managed to get a pole position at the dreadful US Grand Prix where all the Michelin runners couldn't race. In 2006, after only a short stint, Mike Gascoigne decided to leave the team as he didn't like the corporate structure working for Toyota. And the team retained the same driver lineup of Jano Trulli and Ralph Schumacher at the start of the season. But that season only see one podium finish for Ralph Schumacher in the Australian Grand Prix getting a third place. With them scoring 35 points over the course of the season and finishing sixth in the Constructors' Championship. 2008 saw the lineup of Trulli and Schumacher yet again only score 13 points all season which was their lowest tally that they'd scored since 2004. And this particular season was the start of the decline for the manufacturer in Formula 1. In 2008, Jarno Trulli was partnered by another German, this time Timo Glock. This time finishing the season with a much more consistent 56 points and also improving to 5th place in the Constructors' Championship, so it built the team up with a lot more respectability again. Although they were caught up in a little bit of controversy during this season, as at the end of the year, Lewis Hamilton passed Timo Glock on the last lap at the Brazilian Grand Prix to secure the point that he needed to secure the title ahead of Felipe Massa. Accusations were made that Timo Glock had let Lewis Hamilton pass as they were closer off track. And Timo Glock did go on to deny this, but unfortunately later on in his career, he did admit that he went on to get social media hate and death threats. In Toyota's final season in 2009, they did manage again to finish 5th in the Constructors' Championship with a retained lineup of Jano Trulli and Timo Glock yet again. 
although this was supposedly the year that the team was going to be targeting a victory. And unfortunately, towards the end of the season, Timo Glock got injured in a Japanese Grand Prix qualifying crash and was then replaced by Japanese driver Kamui Kobayashi for the final two races of the season. And that was as pretty much as good as it got for the Toyota Formula 1 team, as on the 4th of November 2009, to the shock of everybody, after a massive financial loss for the company and the first in their history, they pulled the plug on the Formula 1 project. There were attempts to try and revive the Grand Prix team ready for the 2010 season, and what people didn't realise at the time was that the TF110 was actually predicted to be one of the most competitive cars on the grid. Several attempts were made to try and rescue the entry in Formula 1 by Zoran Stefanovic for his Stefan Grand Prix team, but he had no success and eventually the team was folded completely by the Toyota Motor Company, with a lot of teams in Formula 1 then going on to use Toyota's wind tunnel in Cologne for their own projects. Looking back at it now, the Toyota Formula 1 team should have been one of the best teams in Formula 1 if it had been given time. But unfortunately, they were the biggest case yet of corporate meddling in the Formula 1 team, where it's proved that car manufacturers should just leave the sporting aspects alone. I think the Toyota Motor Company probably thought it would be easy after their success in Le Mans and the World Rally Championship, but Formula 1 is a whole different thing. And after wasting an alleged over $2 billion on their Formula 1 project in the short time that they were in the sport, Toyota were burned from the whole project and haven't been seen since. I think the main factors that they'd done to shoot themselves in the foot at the time was that they didn't get someone in to retain the position of technical director for long enough to make an influence on the team, and the one good person that they had was Mike Gascoigne, and he wasn't corporate enough, and they kept butting heads. After him quitting the team, they definitely lost momentum and direction, and another big error the team made as well was taking on drivers on inflated salaries that weren't top line. I think personally they would have been much better off taking a good driver on in the number one seat and then betting on a youngster for the future who could have grown with the team. But unfortunately a lot of errors were made along the way and in the end Toyota got burnt quite badly by the experience. And although they won't be alone in being some of the biggest flops in Formula 1 and I think another one of those will be the BMW Sauber team who came oh so close to potentially winning the title back in the day only not to develop the car enough much to Robert Kubica's chagrin. Toyota are certainly one of the biggest flops and most expensive flops in Formula 1 history. It's recently been speculated that Toyota was sniffing around a return to the sport, maybe even with McLaren. But this has been flatly denied so far, and the manufacturer have said that they're not currently looking at making a return to Formula 1. If they did ever get tempted to do a return to Formula 1, though, I can't ever see them coming back with their own team again, as I think that was certainly an experience they don't want to relive. And the most likely scenario would be if they did decide to come back to compete with their rivals of nationality, Honda, would be as an engine manufacturer only, potentially with McLaren. But for now, the manufacturer are happy where they are in their own domain, which is the World Rally Championship, and also back in Le Mans with their hypercar class. One of the only things that really stands out from Toyota's time in F1, apart from being a massive expenditure, was that they did have one of the best colour schemes on the grid at the time, with their white and red livery and Panasonic branding. They certainly don't stand out for any more than that in my memory, but if you've got any other memories of them in the sport, then please don't forget to comment below and let us know your thoughts. And also please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel at the end. Your support is very much appreciated and we can't do it without you guys, so please don't forget to hit that subscribe button.